We start with our newsmaker segment and focus on aviation in Kansas City. And joining us to talk about the future of KCI and related issues is Patrick Klein, the aviation director of Kansas City. Klein has been a city staffer for about two decades, previously serving in a variety of positions, including assistant city manager. Klein has been in his present post a year and a half. Mr. Klein, thanks for coming in and welcome to Ruckus. Thanks for having me. So uh, what is the role of the aviation director? What do you do? The role of the aviation director, so we have two airports. We have our general aviation airport, which is the downtown airport, MKC as we call it, um, which has a lot of corporate jets. VML has offices down there. They're going to have over 900 employees in that, that general terminal. Um, so you've got that, that airport. Um, the general aviation airport and then you've got KCI which has 11,000 acres and you know five, we have over f almost 500 employees and a 180 million dollar budget depending on our capital improvements a year that uh, operate and, and run the, the airport and all the associated things that go along with it. Busing operations, police, utilities, uh, it's our own little city up there. As everybody must know by now, voters on November the 7th are going to be asked to approve a one terminal airport yep. to replace the current KCI structure. You right. played a role in this decision to put the question to voters. Uh, what were some of the major considerations that, that you looked at? Well, you know, we went through a two-year process with the airlines that really went in-depth to look at it. And the airlines have told us, you know, previously, um, operationally, it just doesn't work well for them. You know, that doesn't give the customer experience that they'd like to give their customers. And the, the experience that the customers come to expect in most airports. Um, it, I mean, it works um, for Kansas City, and but for some folks, it you know it just doesn't give that experience. So we went through and you know, over a two-year process, the airlines came in and you know they came in looking to want to do a renovation because they thought that would be the way to go. Um, we, after two years, and we looked at 60 different options, the airlines quickly realized that the way our building geometry is set up, with a building that's 2,200 feet long and a horseshoe that's 72 feet wide, and then you've got a security wall down the middle that it just doesn't. Uh, um, when you start adding to try to build on to make it have all the modern conveniences, it just doesn't. The building doesn't work. Well, what, so, what would you say is the most significant reason, in your estimation, that we would need a new airport? Um, I would say there's three. Right. Um, the, our hold room sizes. Um, right now, the airline, the airline industry's planes are getting bigger. Uh, even Southwest, who flies the same 737s, they have more seats than they ever had. They just brought out their 800s and their maxes. So they went from overnight, we went from a plane coming in that has 143 seats to a plane that now has 175. So as the planes get bigger, that puts more constraints on our hold rooms. And we can't grow our hold rooms because you've got the apron on one side, you've got pre-security on the other, you've got a ticket counter on one side and baggage claim on the other. So there's no, we've pushed it as far as we can push it on the hold room. So you try to deliver all the concessions and the restrooms and everything that people expect and there's just not enough room when you have 100 seats for 175 people that are getting onto a plane. In addition to that, that puts strains on the baggage claim systems, mm -hmm. which don't have redundancies, meaning if a bag belt breaks, they're down for four hours and people are manually taking bags up and down on, on stairs or uh, elevators. And then the roadway system out front gets, gets uh, congested uh, during the day when several planes all hit at the same time and, and uh, you've got six lanes of traffic because all of the traffic's on the same six lanes. If there's one concern I've heard and I'm sure that you've heard is convenience. Will yes. this new airport be as convenient as the current one is? Can you answer that question? I, I would say I would say absolutely, and I think the citizens will start to see some of that today when the renderings come out. Um, you know, the, the, we're not trying to build Dallas Fort Worth or Atlanta or any of the big airports. I mean, we're building more of an Austin kind of indie experience. So, you know, you'll still be able to drop off at the curb, take 75 steps into the building, and then you're past security. And at that point, you've got all the modern convenience of an airport, plus the modern technology we just can't deliver now with. Um, you know, self bag tags, kiosks, um, you know, Wi-Fi throughout the whole building, and and some of the some of the modern conveniences like that. Quick final question, running low on time. If voters say okay on November the seventh, when will construction begin, and what happens during that time to people who travel by air? So the nice thing about our facility right now is B and C will continue to operate as they do until we open up on a new site on A. So what will eventually happen is we'll put some. Um, uh, fencing around the A site and then Edgemore will, will be cut loose to build to start construction. I would say they're probably going to start in late 18 or early 19 um, and then you know the current facility will be used and until the new one opens. Yes, so uh, the, they and won't be you won't be traveling in a construction area you'll be traveling you know, you'll be um, 
traveling now in the two facilities yeah. we've got right. very un good. unimpeded. Out of time. Thank you very much for coming in. Pleasure to meet you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. That is Kansas City, Missouri Aviation Director Patrick Klein. Now let's meet the panel and start a ruckus.